When you visit Marseille, there are a few things you just have to see and do. Annie and I have put together our own personal top 10 for you. Expect everything from essentials to some very special ideas. Welcome to Marseille, France's second largest city with close to a million inhabitants. We are a two-hour drive away from Nice, but literally in another world. Marseille is full of contradictions. You'll find the most breathtaking places and rather shabby looking areas. You can stumble from the busiest spots in this big industrial city to little squares that will remind you of a Provencal village in a matter of minutes. You get to see everything from posh to poor. It's a noisy, smelly, vibrant city full of life and excitement and voices in every language imaginable. Maybe you're not hooked right away, but trust us, this Mediterranean beauty, with its very own, very endearing charm, is worth your visit. So, as promised, here's our selection of must-dos in France's oldest city. This is Notre Dame de la Garde, but we mainly brought you here because of this view. We'll admit, this is as touristy as it can get, but please don't miss a trip to the Basilica of Notre Dame de la Garde or La Bonne Mère. The Good Mother, as the people of Marseille call it. This landmark, 150 meters above the old port of the city, is crowned by a 10 meter high statue of the Madonna and Child. You can head inside, of course, and admire the opulent decorations. But even more so, take your time to enjoy the view of the city below. To the east are the famous Calanque, rocky coves that we'll show you more closely in a little bit the most popular beaches of Marseille and some of the most sought-after residential areas. To the south are the pretty Frioul Islands and the infamous fortress called Chateau d'If, which served as a prison. The islands can be reached by boat and are also worth a the trip. Then, towards the center, you'll find the old port, the heart of Marseille. Of course, it's a bit of a workout to climb up to this basilica, but from the old port it takes no more than 30 minutes to get here on foot. No worries though, we'll show you a much easier way a little later in this video. Even if you're not into museums, you have to see what we're going to show you next. At the entrance of the old port there are three sites to discover. The museum called Musem houses impressive permanent and temporary exhibitions on the Mediterranean. But more than that, it features a beautiful roof terrace, accessible free of charge from Fort Saint-Jean via this narrow bridge. Speaking of the fort, admission to the gardens and the mighty tower called Tour du Roi René is free and especially the tower is worth climbing, as it offers a magnificent view of the old harbor. Attention though, these two sites are closed on Tuesdays. Site number three is Cosquer Méditerranée, which has been open since 2022 and was named one of the world's greatest places by Time magazine. It houses a replica of the Cosquer cave, which you pass by on a boat trip to the Calanque. The cave was discovered only in 1985 by the diver Henri Cosquer. It's a unique archaeological site, decorated with hundreds of Paleolithic engravings and paintings, 
that are about 20,000 years old. Ongoing scientific research has led to replicas of prehistoric animals and this female Homo sapiens who lived here back then. Today the entrance to the cave is 37 meters below sea level and the cave will sooner or later be flooded due to rising sea levels. If you're up for even more great views, across from Fort Saint-Jean at the entrance to the harbor is the beautiful Palais du Faro, now a convention center, whose pretty gardens you can also visit for free. This is the old harbor, the heart of Marseille. From the old port you can basically walk to everything you need to see, so it makes sense to find accommodation not too far from this area. It's a bustling place that starts early in the morning when the fishermen return from the sea and sell their fish right on the quay. Here you will find all the fish used for the famous Bouillabaisse fish soup. Take your time and walk around the harbor to watch the hustle and bustle. You could also have a coffee in one of the restaurants lining the port or just sit at one of the large wooden tables for a while and soak up the atmosphere. There are tourists everywhere, but also people who actually work. If you want to take a boat trip, this is also the place to be. In summer, you can take a shuttle boat to the beach called Pointe Rouge, and all year round there are small ferries that will take you to the Frioul Islands mentioned earlier. But Anya and I are taking you to the coolest boat trip there is next. Since it can get very crowded at the docks, it's best to secure your tickets online or right here the day before. This is going to be our highlight for Marseille, our very favorite thing to do. We're going to show you the Calanque, you'll see. Hopping on a boat and seeing places from a different perspective is always fun. Even more so when the places you're dying to see are only accessible by boat or after an hour's long hike. The Calanque National Park is a wild and rugged area between Marseille and Cassis. A Calanque is a narrow, steep-walled inlet, kind of like the fjords in Norway. The limestone calanque here in Marseille extend for 20 kilometers in length and 4 kilometers in width. And if you take the 3 hour and 15 minutes trip that we did, you get to see them all. At the one called Sormiou, crazy climbers try to give us a heart attack. At Cape Morjou, where scientists moored their boat, you'll find the Cosquer cave, which we've shown you earlier. When you enter any of the Calanques, don't expect to be on your own, remote as they may be. There are always people swimming, kayaking, chilling on their boat, hiking or cliff diving. We'll take you to dinner now, let's go! As usual, you can find the exact locations and lots more in the description below the film. Bistro L'Horloge is again just a stone's throw away from the old port, on Cours Honoré des Tiennes d'Or, a vibrant square day and night with many restaurants. The bistro, recommended by a friend, didn't disappoint. It's a cute little place, stylish inside, with a nice terrace, very nice staff, and great food at good prices. The main courses cost between 20 and 25 euros. We went for a glass of rosé, of course, and Anya had a big salad with creamy burrata mozzarella, while I ate homemade gnocchi with smoked burrata and ratatouille. Plus this devilish dessert. For a list of other great restaurants recommended to us by locals, see the description below the film. And before we forget, when you're in Marseille, you have to try a pastis, the traditional local aperitif with its characteristic anise flavor. You can start drinking it in the afternoon and nobody will look twice. 
Now you would think that we've left Marseille and we are in a small village in the middle of the Provence, but we are not. We are still here in Marseille. We are just in the quartier called Le Panier. And historically, Le Panier is one of the oldest neighborhoods in the world, as Greek settlers founded the city here 2,600 years ago. Of course, it has changed a lot over the centuries, and today it's like a village within the bustling city. Very touristy, but still worth your time. Get lost in the small alleys and maybe get some souvenirs to take home in one of the many tiny boutiques, like a bar of soap, Savon de Marseille. So typical. There are even soap museums in this city. The many colorful graffiti in this neighborhood contrast sharply with this Baroque building in the center of Le Panier. The Hospice de la Charité, or Vieille Charité, is a former almshouse to lock away the poor that is now a museum and cultural center. There are tourist buses to discover Marseille, but we are going to take you on a tourist train today. Call us lazy, but the distances in this big city are pretty far, so we were happy to get a little rest and watch the streets go by. There are two different tours on offer. We chose the one that takes you up to the basilica towering high above the city. But first, the little train that starts right across from City Hall goes all around the harbor, then through the Faro district and along the Corniche Kennedy through the Antum district, where you'll find several great restaurants, by the way. Explanations are given in different languages. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome on board the Petit Train de la Bonne Mer. French, English and German being three of them. If you prefer a tourist bus, here you go. La Canebière used to be the place for shopping. This has changed. We take you there. This is Rue saint ferriol and along with Rue Axo and Rue Paradis, these are today's hotspots if you want to shop for clothes. You'll find stores you know, but also smaller boutiques selling unique pieces. Just around the corner from the famous but no longer trendy boulevard La Canebière is also the shopping center Centre Bourse, which looks rather mediocre from the outside, but has some nice stores to offer, including the Galerie Lafayette. We are at the docks right now, another historical place of Marseille, and we have taken you here simply for its beauty. Thousands of tons of goods were stored in these docks in the 19th century, when the port of Marseille was extended to this part of the city. The former warehouses, with their four courtyards, were fully functional until 1988. Today, the complex is completely renovated and houses several cool concept stores and restaurants. For example, this pastis universe in bright yellow colors. Various stores are unfortunately closed, but we still encourage you to check out this unique place in La Joliette neighborhood. If you're looking for more common stores, a new shopping center has opened just across the street. The summer in Marseille is surely very hot. And sometimes you feel like you really want to cool down and you desperately need a beach. Here are some. Surprising as it may seem, Marseille has several sandy beaches. Closest to the city center is Plage des Catalans, a cute little beach that obviously gets really busy in summer, as it's within walking distance from the old port. Another nice beach not too far out is the Plage du Prophète, a beach that attracts volleyball players and sunbathers alike. It's also great to bring a bottle of wine and a pizza to enjoy the sunset. The beach of Pointe Rouge is the one you can reach by boat in summer, but there are also buses that will take you here. 
This beach is special thanks to the sports equipment of all kinds that you can rent. And last but not least, there's the Plage du Bain des Dames, another small sandy cove that is perfect if you want to escape the hustle and bustle of the city. Did you like our compilation for Marseille? We've put together more of our personal suggestions for many other places in the south of France. 